promotional consideration paid for by the following. Hello and welcome, Cheap Shot Nation. I am your host, Luke, and we're going to take you through everything that happened at WWE NXT Stand and Deliver. We're going to do both nights in one video, so join us for that. And in the meantime, make sure you click the subscribe button, share us with your friends, like us on social media and all that kind of stuff. Enjoy! So we're going to go straight into night one on the 7th of April 2021. Both shows were from the Capital Wrestling Centre and we're going straight into the first match which is a big one. It's Pete Dunne versus Kushida. Now Kushida's been on a bit of a roll. Pete Dunne's had a bit of a lull recently obviously going for the NXT Championship and being beaten a couple of times by the current champion Finn. Balor, or Finn Balor, as uh, William Regal would say. Um, so this one, um, this one was quite disappointing actually, uh, for a starter. And I do respect Pete Dunne and everything that he's done, but really like Kushida as well. I think he's absolutely awesome. And uh, yeah, I was really disappointed by this match. And I thought it could have been a lot more, um, given the time. It was very, very short, which is why... I have given it such a low rating, but Pete Dunne would pick up the victory after a hard-fought match against Kushida using the bitter end and pinning Kushida for the win. Um, uh, so Kushida, uh, after, yeah, like I say, a rather, rather short match this which is why I've given it 2.5 cheap shots out of 5 you can see the rating at the bottom of the screen and that is why it, it wasn't terrible I mean there's no real terrible matches on NXT anyway um, but it was short and I thought they could have done a lot more so um, like I say bitter end for Pete Dawn to win this one um, I'd suggest that this was a bit of a disappointing opener so if you're one of those people that watches the first match and then says eh, I don't want to watch the rest of this you need to go back and watch it because the night does get much better as we roll along so we go on to the North American title number one contenders gauntlet eliminator match wow what a big mouthful that was features five of the best NXT has to offer, is it five? Could be six. I'll go through those in anyway. So the rules of the match, two people start, every three minutes someone else comes down. People can be eliminated at any point during the during the match, either by pinfall, submission, count out, etc. And uh, yeah, the last man standing is going to be the number one contender for the North American Championship. And they will go on to the second night of Stand and Deliver to face Johnny Gargano, the current reigning defending North American Champion, on night two of Stand and Deliver. So let's get cracking, shall we, on this one. So we've got a lot to get through. Leon Roth and... Isaiah Swerve Scott start the match. Swerve gets the best of Leon, Leon Ruff um, in the early going of this one. Bronson Reed joins the party, the colossal one. Love his music, by the way. Love the fact that he's really playing on the sort of Godzilla thing um, with the cityscape and all that kind of stuff. And it's just really, really cool. I like Bronson Reed a lot. Um, so he comes in, they have they has fight a little bit for three minutes and then we're joined by Cameron Grimes baby so he's trying to do this sort of million dollar man thing where he's got all the money and stuff so he pays off Isaiah Swerve Scott he takes the money he's been down his pants and then he takes the money off him and puts it down his own pants maybe he's just a little bit um, you know you know anyway <clears throat> So he pays off Scott. We get Dexter Loomis coming down next. So it is six people rather than five. My mistake. 
Um, Dexter Lewis, and as soon as Dexter Lewis is coming down to the ring, Leon Ruff is eliminated. So we get the first elimination before the last man's even come in. Um, the last man, of course, is L. A. Knight. And as I was trying to think of the other day, what was his name on NWA? It was E. Ly Drake, of course. And uh, he is now in NXT, which is really cool. Um, so Loomis ends up eliminating, uh, sorry, eliminated by Knight. So L.A. Knight eliminates Loomis as he locks in the silence on another competitor. Reed backsplashes Knight and eliminates him straight away. And then Loomis locks in the silence on Knight on the outside because he eliminated him so quickly in the contest. Um, Grimes uh, goes with the handful of tights from Isaiah Swerve Scott. So the man who paid him off to be on his team is the one that gets eliminated by the person he paid. That makes sense, I think. Um, so that leaves us with Isaiah Swerve Scott and the colossal Bronson Reed. The finish of this match is a little bit of overkill, as I've been speaking to um, other wrestlers as well that I have, you know, contact with, and they all seem to think that. Um, certainly, my teacher seems to think that um, the finish of this match was a bit much. Um, Reed drops Swerve on his head, hits a another big move and then hits the splash rather than going for the pin. Now one thing that Paul Malin is always telling us is that if you hit a big move go for the pin. If it doesn't work go for another move. Don't hit three big moves and then go for the pin because there's always chance that they're going to move out of the way. But it would be Bronson Reed that w who would hit the tsunami as it is called which is the colossal splash off the top rope. It looks absolutely devastating. I don't think I'd ever want to take one of those. And Bronson Reed is your number one contender for the North American Championship. He goes on to the second night of NXT TakeOver Stand and Deliver. I'm going to give this one 3.5 cheap shots out of 5. It was a decent multi-man match based on the fact that it was an eliminator so all the people didn't start in the ring all at once. I feel like that is much better in a multi-man match than having them all start at the same time. And uh, yeah, it was a very serviceable match. It was very enjoyable for a multi-man match. And uh, like I say, Bronson Reed moves on to the second night of Stand and Deliver. NXT Championship up for grabs next, that is the NXT United Kingdom Championship rather, up for grabs as Ciampa faces Walter. Now this one was the standout match of the night, definitely told a fantastic story. At one point Walter put his hand through the table and I was remarking to Josh, my mate who I was watching this with over Zoom. Um, well, it wasn't even over Zoom, it was through a phone call. Um, so we just pressed play together. So we were doing it social distanced and uh, remarked that the table after Walter had put his hand through it was just a little bit too perfectly broken down the middle, like one of those breakaway tables you get for your wrestling figures. Um, could be very, very wrong on that, but it just seems a little bit too perfect with the zigzaggy lines. Um, so, Walter, like I say, puts his hand through the table, and that then becomes the focus of Champa. Uh, air raid, su sorry, super air raid crash from Champa on Walter from the turnbuckle. But the finish comes from the champion after a double powerbomb on Champa, su sleeper suplex from Walter on the challenger and one last massive chop when for the whole match the the chop had been rendered useless because of the hurt hand of Walter after putting his hand through the table so that like I say was the focus of Champa. Now 
This one last chop, he just put everything into it and that was the finish. And again, and all of my learnings and all of Paul Maitland's teachings, you know, this was the perfectly told match story and it was also a very entertaining match from two huge superstars in the WWE and you know Champa it speaks for himself Walter put a very good effort in here and did a lot to bring up the value of the NXT United Kingdom Championship so this match was great from bell to bell I'm going to give this four cheap shots out of five and it was just phenomenal it was the possibly the best match of both nights and certainly the best of the first night in my opinion um, so yeah Walter wins he retains the championship he joins uh, Imperium on the ramp and they do the whole ring general thing on the ramp NXT Tag Team Championships next it is MSK mm, versus Legado del Fantasma versus the Grizzle Young Veterans soon to be NXT Tag Team Champions except they weren't because they didn't win um, absolutely gutted with this um, did notice one thing about the playing out of this match and is that is the fact that even though it was a triple threat there was only ever two teams fighting at any one time because the other team was out on the on the floor I don't know whether that was by design or, or what but it just distracted me a little bit based on the fact that it's a triple threat it did break down towards the end turned more AEW and uh, we've got a lot of double teams towards the end but it would be MSK who would win this match with a jumping assisted neck breaker from the turnbuckle to the Grizzled Young Veterans for the win. Now I don't know where Grizzled Young Veterans go from here because they've now lost to MSK twice in the space of a very short amount of time and that annoys me um, maybe it's just me I'm not a big fan of MSK I, I just don't like their style I don't like that they've come in and just won everything I know it's Triple H's pet project and I, I get that you know they're bright, they're colourful, they're young and they're going to get a lot of fans, much like the Hardy Boys did back in the day. But I'm just not a big fan of them. I'd much rather had the grizzled young veterans take the championships. And I've got to say, I was really impressed with Legado del Fantasma. They were absolutely brilliant. They did some fantastic moves. Now, I'm not saying that MSK doesn't do fantastic moves. They do all the flippy stuff. Um, if you like that kind of... Thing, but um, you know just not a fan of them that being said obviously I am a very fair reviewer and I'm going to give this match 3.5 cheap shots out of 5 based on the fact that it was a decent match and not because MSK won now if I wasn't a fair viewer, uh, reviewer I would take a half cheap shot off because MSK won that's how much I don't like them um, but I'm not going to let my prejudices get in the way of journalism and so we move on to the main event of the first night it is the NXT Women's Championship with champion Io Shirai the incomparable undefeated fighting champion that is Io Shirai versus the gargantuan Raquel Gonzalez. Now I really like Raquel Gonzalez ever since her feud with Rhea Ripley. That match in particular was absolutely awesome. The the last woman standing match. Absolutely fantastic. And Io Shirai, she's just embodied the women's division in NXT. So having these two together, fantastic. And of course Raquel Gonzalez got the pin in the win 
of the women's war games match uh, over Io Shirai. So of course Io Shirai walked down to the ring and said, I want you and Dakota Kai, credit to her, she didn't get involved in this one which made it even better. So Gonzalez looked every bit the champion in this one. You could tell from minute one that she would be able to hold her own against the incomparable champion and it was Raquel Gonzalez that was would pick up the win in this one by hitting the one-armed powerbomb on the champion after a really hard-fought match from both ladies in this one. Io Shirai did not go down without a fight, jumping off of the giant skull at the entranceway to the arena. And of course, these days with NXT, the setup for takeovers is the ramp that leads directly to the ring apron, um, which is new. <laughs> I mean, they used to have the normal ramp, but now it's a bit more, a bit more old school, a bit more WCW, really, and dare I say, AEW as well. But I quite like that setup just for the takeovers. It elevates the entranceway and things like that. But Raquel Gonzalez would pick up the championship. We have a new women's champion in NXT, and who is going to stop Raquel Gonzalez from just dominating? that division again much like Io Shirai and Shayna Baszler before her and uh, Asuka before her we've only had a handful of NXT women's champions that have absolutely dominated and I feel like Raquel Gonzalez this is a good time to put the title on her and bring NXT a new era in the women's division certainly since they've brought in the women's tag team titles as a thing in NXT, whereas I thought the main women's tag team titles would defend on all three brands, it's turned out to be a good choice because that title is being used really well as well as the main women's title as well. So, Raquel Gonzalez, the new women's champion, and uh, I'm going to give this one three cheap shots out of five simply because it was the right time to change the championship. The It was definitely the second best of the night, bearing in mind Volta and Champa stole the show on the first night. This had a massive task, a gargantuan task, to overcome that. But that is the end of night one. Join us for night two. Moving on to night two of Stand and Deliver, the NXT TakeOver show that has featured two, over two nights, of course. Uh, the first night was on USA Network, the second night was on Peacock. Of course, both were available here in the UK on the WWE Network. Although we did get loss of sound on the first night where USA Network put adverts in. Thanks, lads! Really appreciate it. Anyway, we're going to go straight on to the first match of the night two, which happened on the 8th of April 2021. I was going to say 8th of the 4th. I'm going right back to work, even though I've got the next week off, because it's WrestleMania weekend. And um, it is the Cruiserweight Championship. And it is Jordan Devlin, the ace... WrestleCrate UK, uh, Jordan Devlin the ace, the, the, the champion that obviously couldn't defend his championship, he won it this time last year at WrestleMania 36 and um, then the pandemic was like you know huge and he couldn't get back over to defend it so we had another tournament in which the other challenger Santos Escobar would win the tournament and pick up the championship so we've got an interim champion in Santos Escobar and this was how it was actually built and the actual champion Jordan Devlin in a ladder match similar to the Shawn Michaels Razor Ramon ladder match where they had two titles hanging above 
the ring and of course this was going to always be introduced by the heartbreak kid himself um, putting the match on and, and saying this is exactly well, I didn't actually say anything he just sort of pointed to a, a holder and said there you go there's a ladder do it and this is what we got really good match this one uh, Santos Escobar as well as um, his sidekicks both of them impressed me in the title match the tag title match and Santos Escobar certainly impressed me here um, never been the hugest fan of Santos Escobar but I think this actually has changed my mind Jordan Devlin has always been a good performer in the squared circle whether it was on NXT UK or just on normal NXT and he has proved that again of course the cruiserweight championship was the WWE cruiserweight championship it is now being adopted by NXT as a sole NXT title um, they still do 205 live as well so that is absolutely fine um, but Santos would retrieve the championships both of them and uh, win this match he didn't get much help either or I think, don't think he actually got any uh, if I remember rightly but it was quite late on when I watched this so maybe I got that wrong but they would be fighting at the top of the big ladder there would be a ladder set up in the corner Santos Escobar would get the better of Jordan Devlin push him off the top of the ladder and Devlin would take a nasty spill through the steel ladder was actually wood don't tell anybody um, still I'm sure that it hurt quite a bit that took Jordan Devlin out and gave Santos Escobar the chance to retrieve both titles and a great start to night two absolutely on fire I'm going to give this match four cheap shots out of five are absolutely on par with Walter versus Champa, although that told a completely different story. This told a story of two champions that have never met each other before, but both have a valid reason to think that they are the real cruiserweight championship. Uh, the, the real cruiserweight championship, just you know, put them around uh, someone's waist and let them be the championship. Anyway both have a genuine uh, or had a genuine um, feeling that they should be the champion so um, this match was really really good I really enjoyed it and a great start to night two of NXT TakeOver Stand and Deliver NXT Women's Tag Team Championships are up for grabs next it is the champions uh, Shotzi Blackheart and Ember Moon, nearly said Io Shirai, that's not correct. And they are going against The Way. And that is uh, Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell, of course. Um, almost forget about Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell because the focus is so much on uh, Johnny Gargano that, um, you know, how can I forget about these two? They're absolutely gorgeous. And they're really, really good inside the squared circle as well. Candice LeRae is possibly one of my favourite candidates to become NXT Women's Champion at some point in her career down in Florida. Um, this match was actually again really entertaining, a great way to follow a great match which started the show. It would be Shotzi Blackheart and Ember Moon who would retain the championships here as Shotzi Blackheart takes Indy Hartwell to the ball pit or was it it could have been Candice LeRae actually I don't know I, I should have checked that out really shouldn't I should probably watched it again again it was late either way Shotzi Blackheart and Emma Moon they retain the championships and it was a really fun match and I'm going to give this one 3.5 cheap shots out of 5 we're 2 for 2 in night 2 if you want to watch more, keep watching the video. Next match is the culmination of a two night series of matches. It is the North American Championship on the line next with champion Johnny Gargano 
facing off against the winner of the NXT and North American Championship Eliminator thing that was on night two on night one, which was actually a, a decent match. It was Bronson Reed who won that match and he goes on to face Johnny Gargano for the championship. And it would be Johnny Gargano who picked up the win on this one and retained his championship. He's actually having a really good, good run with the North American Championship this time and I really really like his new attitude and the way is also awesome as well. But Bronson Reed of course didn't go down without a fight. You can't have a guy that big and that agile without having some fight in him. He went big, he missed big and Johnny Gargano would get the pin. Um, and this would come from a missed moonsault from Bronson Reed. So the tsunami missed earlier on. He goes up top again and tries the moonsault. Something different but still quite as impactful if he had have hit it. Gargano, um, sorry, chance for Gargano to hit two final beats and retain his championship and the fact that it took two of them really did make Bronson Reed look strong and in hindsight this match was a lot better than Bronson Reed's win on night one because it did make him look really really strong and it took two of Johnny Gargano's finishing moves in order to do that and Johnny Gargano can tell that in a different way. So I'm going to give this one three three cheap shots out of five. I will get my um, words out eventually. Three cheap shots out of five for this one. Really good, really good way to follow the Women's Tag Team Championships and night two so far is on absolute fire compared to night one which was also very very good. Now I was a bit surprised of the placement of this one considering we'd had two championships in a, or three championships in a row at that point. It would have been nice to break this up but I can see why they did what they did. It is the NXT Championship up for grabs next. It is the champion Finn Balor versus Karrion Cross, the chap who got injured after winning the championship against Keith Lee and having to relinquish it which is why Finn Balor was the champion or is the champion at the time of talking about this match from the beginning. And uh, so he never lost the championship, he had to give it up much like Edge, that same story. So he's coming in this time to regain his championship, the championship that he never lost. Plus we get to see Scarlet, which is always a good thing. Um, so Karrion Cross is every bit the badass that he makes himself out to be, and it would prove to be in this one as he basically just beat the tar out of the champion. Um, so halfway through the match the coup de grace actually hits on Karrion Cross, uh, Finn Balor had been working on the midsection of the big man throughout the match and of course the legs and the arms and every, everywhere else that he could possibly hit because you know you take out the power base of a big powerhouse then you get a bigger chance of winning maybe a hundred and forty one and two third percent chance of winning thank you Scott Steiner anyway um, that would hit but you don't get a near fall um, you know that's that's a big move and it would hit square in the midsection for Johnny Gargano uh, carrying cross rolls through from the pin the cross rains down with strikes towards the end of the match he just gets really angry and think that Finn Balor said that it was carrying cross's weakness which was emotion did come to the forefront here, just rains down on the back of the neck of Finn Balor and uh, finishes him off with a giant forearm to the back of the head and neck and Balor is beaten just by one strike, makes Karrion Cross look like the badass that he absolutely is in this one whilst making Finn Balor look really really strong as well. Of course Finn Balor is 
just amazing anyway. The fact that he had to come back down to NXT for people to realise that is baffling to me. He is every bit the champion that he says he is. Now he put back all title challenges in Karrion Cross when he won it, didn't get the chance to defend that championship. So I'm interested to see where Karrion Cross goes from here and indeed Finn Balor and whether he's going to get another call up to the main roster, whether he's wanting to go to the main roster based on how they, they treated him. Obviously with Karrion Cross having to give up his title it's very similar to Finn having to give up the Universal Championship. Of course Finn Balor was the first ever Universal Champion. Um, people don't seem to remember that because there's been a lot happened since he did it. Um, so, Karrion Cross beats the Prince, he dethrones Balor from the NXT Championship. This was a great match from start to finish. Another four out of five cheap shots for me. If you have watched this match and you think that I am wrong again with any other matches as well. Let me know in the comments section or join us on social media as we move to the next match, which happens to be an unsanctioned match. So I don't even know if I can talk about it to be honest. But because it's an unsanctioned match, I will absolutely do just that because everything was unsanctioned from the unsanctioned entrance music to the unsanctioned security, the unsanctioned ring gear and the unsanctioned referee which was the only thing that was actually unsanctioned because he was wearing a black t-shirt. The unsanctioned match was between Adam Cole, baby, and Carl O'Reilly who comes out just, you know, doing his rock thing and it just doesn't work with his new music. I was kind of taken out of the moment with that. Um, be, possibly because I've associated Kyle O'Reilly and Adam Cole with the UE's music. Um, but also, you know, Kyle O'Reilly didn't show the kind of fighting spirit that he showed against Finn Balor when he was going for the title. Uh, it was the reason that led to this moment anyway. Um, it just it was just kind of disappointing this match really. Um, to say it was unsanctioned, they didn't really leave the ring too much. Um, they did try and break the table, that didn't break. And I'm sure that's going to go on Matthew's I am the table segment of Botchamania. Hi Matthew. Anyway, um, that would be that. And of course there was a lot of chairs, a lot of them had the UE's symbol on them, uh, very again symbolic of the ending of the Undisputed Era. Uh, and it does make me wonder where Roderick Strong is going to go in this and of course this is all broken down while Bobby Fish is not, not available through injury. And it just makes me wonder, Kyle riley has got a new character, Adam Cole has all the tools to go onto the main roster and do well, but are they going to actually use him? And there's just so many questions. And really, the night ended on a sour for me because I'm I'm actually glad that I'm not the only one that thought this, having talked to a couple of people. But I thought this match was really disappointing. Um, not that they need to you know bash each other over the head or you know draw blood or anything like that. Just there was something lacking from it. There was, you know, for all the build up, um, you know, Adam Cole walking into Kyle O'Reilly's dojo and trying to beat him up, and, you know, there was just so much in the build up that got me ready for this. And then it happened. And it that was it. It just happened. Um, they. Did fight outside the ring a little bit. Adam Cole hit Kyle O'Reilly with a TV monitor, which looked like a really giant TV monitor, considering we're in 2021. Um, they did fall through the stage at one point, which was pretty cool. Adam Cole broke down the sides of the stage to get at Kyle O'Reilly. But it would be the chain that was brought in 
quite early on in the match that would be Adam Cole's downfall. Carl O'Reilly would climb up to the top rope, wrap the chain around his leg, which at the time I was thinking, wow, how daft is that? Because all you have to do is pull the chain and flush him down, you know? Um, but he didn't. Adam Cole stayed down, to be fair, selling a bit too much while he, uh, while Carl O'Reilly wrapped the chain around his leg. Uh, the flying knee happened and uh, Kyle O'Reilly won and I'm okay with this. I think it's time for Kyle O'Reilly to come into his own. I think he needs to work on his character a little bit because he's been in the shadow of Adam Cole and he's always had a second. Um, so yeah, work on the character. Kyle O'Reilly will be absolutely brilliant in NXT. It just makes me wonder where Adam Cole is going from here. So um, I'm going to give this one three cheap shots out of five. Um, again I thought this was quite disappointing. Uh, showed glimpses of possibilities of what could be. Um, but ultimately Adam Cole's missus Britt Baker had a better match on AEW. I guess that's going to be a talking point in the Cole Britt Baker household. Um, but yeah, overall, another great night and another fantastic takeover event as you would expect. My only worry now is that we've been built up so much and we've been given such a good two night show for NXT that WrestleMania is going to be really disappointing. But hey, it's WrestleMania! Hey, hey it's Wrestle. Blinking Mania Weekend. If you're watching the show, let us know because we're going to be doing all the social media type stuff all the way through. We're going to watch this one live because I've actually booked time off for this because I didn't know it was going to be a two night takeover. Didn't even know there was going to be a takeover because there wasn't one last year. And uh, yeah, so I couldn't watch that live. I watched that night previously to recording this and hopefully uploading it. Um, but I really enjoyed this show. I thought it was a very, very strong NXT takeover and a good reason to forget about AEW for a little while, you know. Um, but yeah, um, really good. If you haven't watched it, go and watch it. Watch it before the show tonight. Get yourself like 8 million hours of wrestling in before the big event on Saturday and Sunday. Um, Saturday the 10th and Sunday the 11th of April. So that is my thoughts on NXT TakeOver Stand and Deliver the two night special of NXT TakeOver. Great, absolutely brilliant. Again let us know what you thought of the show on all the social media channels or below the video in the comments section or down the side depending on what device you are using. You know how to use YouTube now people. If you're enjoying the videos please click that subscribe button and consider ringing that notification bell to know when we upload new videos. Wrestling is few and far between at the moment over in the UK so it is all American shows um, until something happens with that uh, here in the UK but this is why the channel was set up to review independent UK shows and dabble into the American side of it occasionally it's just that it's taken over now um, also check out the movie channel that is quick shot reviews and the gaming channel cheap shot entertainment system where we're going to be playing a very popular classic wrestling game on there very very soon so make sure you go and check those out as well and I will see you next time. You are the Cheap Shot Nation. Thank you very much for watching. Take, your, take care of yourselves and enjoy coming out of lockdown. Goodbye.